it's almost time to go on that trip. You've been eating a little bit cleaner recently and pushed a bit harder in your workouts, but you really don't want to lose that progress after a few buffets. Because let's be honest, losing your gains after putting in so much work would be such a waste. But you also don't want to restrict your diet and you actually want to have fun. In this video, I'm going to share with you all the tips and tricks that I use to stay fit on holiday, so you can too. And a few things I take with me that make staying fit just so easy. First, training. Your training will really come down to what type of person you are on holiday. So are you someone who's really active or would you prefer to lie on a beach all day? Or your holidays tend to be more like ours and you could quite easily find yourself touring the whole country by foot. Depending on which bucket you fall into, you might want to think about tweaking your training just a little bit. As a little disclaimer, you might find that you don't actually want to go to the gym at all and that's completely okay. This is your holiday and ultimately you can do what you want with it. But seeing as you clicked on this video, I get the feeling that you actually want to stay fit and you might want to do some workouts. Now, these workouts don't have to be in a gym. Usually, hotels will have some sort of gym, although if you're a hardcore gym goer like me, you'll know that hotel gyms often have the reputation of not being ideal. But for most of us, the main goal when it comes to our training or our strength or our physique when we're on holiday is not to necessarily progress, but it's just to maintain what we currently have. And there have been so many studies that have shown that the amount of intensity or the number of workouts that you need to maintain your current physique is barely anything compared to what you would need if you were trying to grow. So even if you only do a couple of workouts while you're away, it's very unlikely that you're going to lose all of your gains. But if you are planning on hitting the gym fairly regularly, I'd recommend doing this in the morning just so that you're not stressing about having enough time later in the day. You're going to enjoy your holiday and all the experiences a whole lot more if you just get your workout over and done with in the morning because just trust me, it takes so much stress out of the rest of your day. If you're a little bit more serious about your training or you're an athlete or just a hardcore gym goer, then there's a few techniques you can use leading up to your trip that are actually going to help you to continue to progress while you're away. So what you're going to do a week or two before you actually go on your trip, you're going to ramp up that intensity in your workouts. I want you training hard, pushing to failure, really put all of your effort in, push for those PRs and make the most of that week before you go away. Then when it comes to your training on your trip, you're going to be taking a deload week. Deload weeks are essentially a way of decreasing the intensity of your workouts for a short period of time so that your body can recover from the accumulated stress that you've been putting on it. While you're away, this gives you the freedom to have shorter workouts by doing fewer exercises, fewer sets or fewer reps. Or if you want, you could just keep fairly similar workouts but only push with 50 or 60% effort. This can take a lot of the pressure off your training while you're away, especially if you can't find a decent gym. And when you get back, that deload week is going be so so beneficial because your body will have recovered from the accumulated stress and you'll be able to start hitting more PRs again. Your deload obviously doesn't just have to be one week, it can be two weeks but any more than that I'd say you probably want to think about adding a few more workouts in if you are serious about your training. So that's more of the lifting side of things but what about cardio? Again that sort of comes back to what type of person you are when you go on holiday. So if you're the kind of person who likes to lie on the beach all day you might want to consider trying out some different activities like swimming or surfing, even beach volleyball. But if none of those do your vibe or it's just too hot to do cardio outside, because let's be real, sometimes it is, then you might want to consider getting your steps in with just a quick 30 minutes in the gym. But if your holidays tend to be more active in the first place, then you can just get your steps in by exploring. It's crazy how easily I seem to rack up steps when I'm on holiday. I think one day on our last holiday I got almost 30,000 steps and I was like, is this right? Oh yeah, that's another thing. I have a little Fitbit which was really useful just to help me sort of track my steps. It's not essential, but it can be good to help you track how active you've been. Let's talk hotel gyms. I don't know about you, but I've never been to a hotel gym that's had a squat rack. I don't know, maybe I'm just choosing the wrong hotels, but in most ones you go to, they're not going to have the same equipment as would a usual gym. Which is understandable, because I imagine there's a lot of health and safety stuff that goes into it. But for us, if we do want to use the hotel gyms, it usually means that we have to get creative. A really good tool for your workouts, or also if the hotel gym's just too busy, is to do banded workouts. Hang on. I brought this little resistance band with me on my last holiday, and it was really handy because I used it for leg day, you can also get longer resistance bands which are really good for upper body days and I'll link my favourites in the description because if you can't get to a gym, these are really useful for helping you to get a solid workout in. 
So those and outdoor gyms, you can actually combine the two. So you can take your bands to the outdoor gym and you can get a really good session going. Sometimes outdoor gyms even have better equipment than the hotel gyms. So it's definitely worth a look if you see any in your area. Saying that, if you're someone like me who absolutely loves the gym, then it can be a really good experience to just go to one of the local gyms. I personally like doing this while I'm traveling because it gives me a little insight into the gym culture in a different country. I mean, the last one I went to, everyone spoke Portuguese and the only person I could understand was the receptionist. So that was interesting, but it was still nice to experience the different culture. In some ways, you really don't need to speak the same language to be able to connect with people in the gym because everyone's there to train, everyone's there to improve themselves. And there's that common thread between every single person who's there. I don't know, it's just so inspiring to me that I could be on one side of the world working out in one gym and then there's someone on the opposite side of the world doing the exact same thing with very similar goals. But sometimes when it comes to your training on holiday, it's not about your resources, it's about your resourcefulness. So make the most out of the equipment you have and I promise you, you can get a really good workout in as well as progress with just a few bands. Okay, now for the big one diets. This might sound controversial to someone who's trying to stay fit on holiday, but honestly, you don't have to restrict your diet while traveling. This trip is quite possibly a once in a lifetime opportunity, so it's important that you make the most of it. And on top of that, trying out different foods and cuisines can be such a fun way to help you really experience the culture. That being said, it's going to be helpful for you to be mindful of your food choices at least 70% of the time to keep you feeling your best and staying healthy on holiday. There's three practical things that I always do whenever I go away. Each day, it can be a good idea to allocate one or two of your meals as a lighter meal. That means that you have at least one or two other meals that you can go all in on. This isn't a way of just saving your calories for the buffet. You probably don't want to look at it like that. But having a couple of lighter meals is going to help with your digestion, it's going to reduce bloating, and you're actually going to feel better and more energized throughout the rest of the day. If you want to enjoy your continental breakfast, go enjoy your continental breakfast. And later on, you might want to opt for a lighter lunch. Then in the evening, you can go and try one of the local or traditional dishes. Dishes meals. Or you could do a lighter breakfast and lighter dinner, then go for a buffet at lunch. It's really up to you. The next tip is ask for your sauces and dressings on the side. A lot of the time things like salads will come with a lot of dressing and I personally find that quite overpowering so I just always go for the dressing on the side. But if you're someone who is conscious about the number of calories that you're consuming, it is helpful to get that dressing on the side so you can just add as much as you want and you don't have to have the whole thing. I don't know about you but I'd rather have an extra snack than a dressing on my salad. It does ultimately come down to your fitness goals though, because if you are trying to lose weight or you're just being mindful with what you eat, then getting the dressing on the side is a good option. But if you're someone who's currently doing a bulking phase like me and you're trying to gain muscle, then little things like keeping the dressing on is probably not going to do you any harm at all. So remember to keep your individual goal in mind when you're making these choices around food. One thing I'd recommend for everyone trying to stay fit on holiday though is to prioritize protein. I know you've probably heard me bang on about protein a hundred times before, but when you're choosing your meals, make sure to choose one that has a source of protein in it because this is going to be essential in helping you to maintain your muscle mass, especially if your workouts aren't as intense as they usually are. I'm not saying you have to have protein in every single meal or snack, so go and enjoy an ice cream. But if there's two things on a menu at dinner that you're trying to decide between, go for the one that's going to have the most protein. Next, travel snacks. I am the travel snacks queen. You don't know if all your flights are going to be running on time. You don't know if they're going to be cancelled or delayed. You need food. It's essential. Because you don't want to be spending £7 in an airport for a protein bar. So what I like to do is get a bunch of travel packs of different snacks from Amazon and then just take those with me. You can get quite a lot of individual packets that are really easy to just slip in your hand luggage and it's going to be so much cheaper than trying to get stuff in an airport. There is no worse feeling when your flight's cancelled, they're trying to get you on a new flight, you've not got any food, you're hungry, you've got a headache and you could have easily avoided most of the problems if you've been just that little bit more prepared. I like to take things like pretzels, nuts, trail mix, olives, 
I'll drop links to my favourite and most affordable ones in the description. Another thing that's really useful to make sure that you're getting your protein in while travelling is the little travel packs of protein powder that you can get. I think they're actually called variety packs, but you can get a whole bunch of different flavours. I did this on our last holiday and it was honestly a lifesaver. I got the My Protein Clear Away selection box and they honestly just tasted like fruit juice, but it was so refreshing. Also, the packets are really small, so you can just slide them in between stuff in your suitcase and it barely takes up any weight. Right, hydration. I've got so many little hacks about water when you're traveling, it's actually insane. First of all, you want to get yourself a water bottle that's got measurements on the side so that you know how much you've been drinking. My one also has the time of day on it so you know how much you should have drunk by a certain point in the day. But there's a strategy I use when it comes to water for my whole trip. So, when I leave the house to go to the airport, I have my water bottle and I just fill it completely to the top. I try and work my way through that before I get to the airport, but if I don't, then I just down it before security because they won't let you through if you've got water in your water bottle. My dad emptied out most of his water before security, but there was just a teeny tiny bit left in the bottom and it got stopped for like 20 minutes. So make sure you down it and there's none left. Then after you get through security, go fill it up again because we don't want to be paying £8 for a bottle of water on the flight. A lot of airports usually have stations where you can go and fill up your water but if you can't find one, just go and ask at a cafe because the staff are usually more than happy to just go fill it up for you. Speaking of water... That means you're going to have fresh water with you for the whole flight. It's also really handy to research before you go if the tap water in the country that you're going to is actually drinkable. Because if you know that the water is not going to be safe to drink, then it can be really helpful to put another bottle of water in your actual suitcase. Because you can check that in and they don't really care about liquids in there. As long as it fits within the weight limits, then you're all good. That can just be really helpful for when you land and then someone's suddenly like, where's the water? Because there's always one person who forgot to fill theirs up before the flight. If you know that the water where you're going is going to be safe to drink if you filter it, then it can be really helpful to get yourself a filter water bottle. These come with a little filter that you can screw on the top and then you put the water in, but when you're drinking it, it filters it for you and it actually tastes really good. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to stay hydrated while you're on holiday though, because usually when you're going somewhere hotter than when you came from, you're going to lose water a lot faster. You're going to be sweating more, you're going to be in the sun, so you need to stay hydrated. This can often be really hard if you don't actually enjoy the taste of water. So what I'd recommend is getting these little water flavour packets. I think it's called Crystal Light. I'll link it below. And you can get so many fun flavours like raspberry lemonade, fruit punch, which is going to make it so much easier for you to get your water in. In terms of travelling itself, if you're someone who finds yourself swelling up a bit on long flights, then try wearing compression clothing. You've probably heard people say wear compression socks, but I'm saying you can go a bit further than that. So things like tight t-shirts, leggings, compression clothing is quite popular in the gym nowadays, so you might even have some lying around. But this, along with staying hydrated, is going to be your best bet to keep that uncomfortable swelling down and just help you feel more comfortable the whole trip. Also, if you're on a long flight or a long stopover, then you want to make sure that you're getting up and walking around as much as possible just to get the blood flowing. And in terms of your holiday as a whole, for the majority of us, our main focus shouldn't be on staying fit. It should be on enjoying the adventure and experiencing new cultures while living an active lifestyle. You don't have to be restrictive with your diet and as long as you're mindful with the foods that you choose at least 60% of the time, then applying all the tips in this video is going to make it easy for you to stay fit. But even if you do find that you fall in a slightly off track or you just feel completely unmotivated to go to the gym when you get back, then I've actually got a video that's going to help you get back on track, get motivated again and get out of that fitness slump. See you there?